Raisam Zati's People's Convention got underway this past Friday at Constitutional Hill in Johannesburg. 800 delegates assembled to, to lay the groundwork for the party's policy proposal ahead of the general elections of 2024. Baha'i Sidumelan, good evening. My name is Tambo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined in studio by Esther Padi, who is the National Coordinator for Raisam Zanzi, and she's here to speak to us about the party's policy convention that took place over this past weekend at Constitutional Hill and also what the party has to offer as we are gearing up to the 2024 elections. Hester, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening, welcome to the show. Thank you so very much and thank you for having me and good evening to your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, I, I want us to bring it back to the people. Sure, um, You know, before we get into the People's Convention, let's talk about the party itself. For an ordinary South African who's out there, yeah. um, doesn't really know what uh, is Rhizom Zanti and what you stand for. Maybe let's begin the conversation there. Okay, thank you so much for that question. Um, so basically Rhizom Zanzi is a movement created by the people for the people. I think we have felt as ordinary citizens that the time to sit on the, in the sidelines and watch our country uh, burn into flames. It's it, we can't we can't we can't allow that to happen anymore. So we came together as ordinary citizens to say we know what we want. We have solutions to our own problems. We are just lacking the political vehicle to drive us to where we need to go. Because in so many ways, more than one South Africans have been sharing their disputes. Or we don't like this one. We don't like this. But we have not had the voice. So Rise and Zanz is basically that movement that is going to help give a platform to ordinary citizens with solutions, with ideas, and who are saying, "I think I can be able to lead," as a platform to be able to have the, po the, the, the political power. So what we have realized, and that is why most of our partnership is with communities and even civic organizations, where the work has been happening, but those people have social power, but they are lacking political uh, will. So Rise and Zanzi, it is created as a political vehicle to take the people to the ballot papers where we can start to design the South Africa we all deserve. I mean, the importance of, uh, you know, engaging the community, as you say, that uh, yeah. it was formulated because of uh, the people on the ground. I mean, I know for, for, for a fact that uh, before you guys launched, you went to communities sure. last year, um, you know, even throughout uh, the beginning of this year, understanding what people need and what are some of those challenges that they are facing. But let's talk about uh, some of your values. I know there's equality, there's there's um, justice, uh, you know, freedom there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe take us through that and also uh, what distinguishes you from these other parties that we have across the country? Okay, so our values were basically designed according to the issues that we have gotten on the ground. And I want to really emphasize the, the groundwork we have done. Every cue, everything we have designed was always what the voices of, reflecting the voices of the people. And when we talk about equality, we are talking about equality in a sense that our generational mission must be able to create a South Africa that is equal, prosperous and safe because a lot of our communities are experiencing unjust, um, a lack of justice. And we all see how, how the things are happening in Cabo de Zondo, the, the state capture, and we are still sitting and we are waiting and we are not seeing any result from all the things that have happened. So we are basically fighting to help South Africans to experience the freedom that we were promised in 1994. And the Riswa slogan is 19, 2024 is our 1994 because we are trying to practicalize what democracy must look like for the people. It was given and it we feel like it was more of a concept than a reality. And Rise and Zanz is saying that 2024, we want those promises that were made to be, become practical. If we said this government is for the people, by the people, for the people, let's practicalize it and give the people on the ground the power to govern themselves because that's what we were promised. So we are not here to change much and we are not here to say this is a one-man show party. That is why we are also called the National Leadership Collective because we are a collective of people mm -hmm. who are seeing problems in different spaces and sectors and saying this is what I can put on the table to help come 
come with these solutions. So freedom came from that because we want people to experience what freedom looks like, what it feels to be in a, in a country where you don't have to worry about the basics. People are worrying about, the, we're not equal. We, right now we're having people saying relaka load sharing, but there's areas where electricity has never been there since 1994. So the equality needs to come there so that we balance everyone and we become that movement that does not leave anyone behind. Just before we go for an ad break, I want to understand from uh, the party itself, right, Mzanti, what is your view on the current state of the country? The system is broken. It is not working. We have a leadership crisis, and I say it's a leadership pandemic because we are led by people who are elites up there in the offices study aircon and not really in touch with what is happening on the ground. And I can give you a quick example about what happened last, uh, last month, the Sasa Saga. People were never, never even received a, an apology, a direct apology to say, we understand we have failed you there. And whilst we know that South African families, most of them are dependent on the income Yasasa to feed their families. So we have a leadership crisis and the state of the this whole system is broken. And Raizam Zanz is saying we need to solve for elite, uh, uh, eligible leaders and leaders that can be able to take this country forward and not come there to to, to, to be saved, but to save the people because we are led by celebrities now. Esther, uh, I want us to park it there. We will continue the conversation after the ad break. Now, the newly established political party outlined the party's state of readiness at this weekend's uh, inaugural People's Convention uh, you know, conference there. We will get to, to understand more on what came out, out of that uh, conference. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. If you just tuned in before the ad break, we got to learn more about the political party Rise and Zanti. And also, you know, uh, got to understand exactly uh, what is their stance on, on various issues, particularly looking at uh, the current uh, state uh, the country finds itself in. Uh, Esther Paddy is still joining us in studio just to discuss that more. Esther, thanks very much for staying on. I want us to talk about uh, this weekend's People's Convention. Um, you know, just to understand what were the takeouts there? Yeah. What was it all about? Uh, mm -hmm. Just for an ordinary South African. Yeah. So when we, after we launched, we promised that we will be traveling across the country to do a, at the town halls where we were doing a listening session, listening to the people's issues, getting directive from them, or what do they want to see from us. So the people's convention this past weekend was a development for from that, where we brought in more than 800 um, delegates across the country to come and now discuss the themes. So the themes came out from the listening sessions that we have been doing around and the other programs that we call the People's Manifesto Consultation. So we discussed our six themes. Uh, one is the individual and family um, and family theme, uh, community well-being, nationhood, um, economy, governance, and climate change. So I will just share more about I individuals and, and families. And we, we as Rising Zanzi, we wanted to help understand or help the country to understand from the, the conference why is it important for us to focus on an individual and a, and a family before we can even get to communities because communities are built by different families yeah. who are com comprised by different individuals. And what we have come out from the convention is that South Africa really needs to deal with the healing of this nation. We had a very pa a bad past that was violent and very traumatic and we have not really dealt with that as a nation and that is why we also spoke about it when we spoke about building our nationhood um, how we need to focus on having a country that has a vision we need to be guided by one vision so that we can promote the spirit of patriotism that will need to take us to another level if we are saying we want to build a south africa that we all deserve we need to understand where we went wrong and how we fix that because we cannot expect to get people to a fight 
to fight to build a South Africa they deserve, and yet the basics are not sorted. And that is why even our party leader insisted to us when the convention started to say, if whatever that will come out of the convention does not have food as a priority or hunger as a priority, we are still not talking good business because we cannot continue after generation from one generation to another to speak about poverty. That is why we are even saying we are what we want to eradicate it. So those were the interesting inputs that came from our people and how we need to strengthen the, the, the law enforcement in our country because we cannot have thieves working with our police and we expect change to happen. So there's a lot of inputs that came from there that will help us um, take South Africa forward and that will be designed more properly or maybe shared more properly or the, or the, the People's Manifesto. Mm. So, um, I mean, speaking about the People's Manifesto, um, is, uh, you know, everything that transpired over the weekend now setting precedent of what is expected in terms of your manifesto sure. as a party uh, as we head to the 2024 elections? Definitely. So we cannot say we are saying the people shall govern and the government is for the people by the people and yet when you are making policies you're excluding them. So the People's Manifesto will be launched after a month from now where people who were part of the convention and who we met across the country through the town hall will say that is my voice is there it must reflect all the things that have they've said to us so this was a process to help us design and finalize the people's manifesto but we started also with the declaration where we were committing ourselves to South Africans on what kind of a country we want and after the declaration that was shared on Sunday it will be the people's manifesto and then we'll go down to the people's plan because we cannot build or, dis or, or create a process that does not have a plan that is giving us the sense and the T's and crosses the T's. If we, we, we need to have a plan on how we move forward. So that's, 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 that's what the convention has led us to. And in a few weeks' time, we'll get the People's Manifesto. Mm. Um, you know, I want to get your comment on this. Uh, we're seeing a lot of um, uh, how many analysts are saying that is an exodus of leaders have the embattled power utility ESCOM. There we saw the resignation of um, Poma Kwan as the board chair there. Um, as Razim Zanti, or how do you uh, evaluate or whatever that's happening there at Mega Ward Park? Uh, particularly, I mean, the CEO position has not been filled yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's been over uh, since Andrew the Rater left yeah. uh, in February, and then now we're seeing the board chairperson uh, leaving there. Uh, some, somehow, does it really inspire confidence? It 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 does not because. Um that is why I even said to you earlier that we have a leadership crisis. And the biggest crisis that we have is political interference in the state-owned entities. Uh, because it is a platform for the governing party to be able to utilize that to eat up the money for the people. So I think as Raisam Zanzi, when we are talking about solving the issues of leadership, we are trying to figure this whole thing out to say state-owned entities must help the people. They must help the people and government must not interfere. And that is why in our government, if a staff party is not going to parliament, she will stay as a political figure rising sons. You don't, we don't want to mix the two things because we end up conflicting the whole process of government because our politics are interfering in the thing. And that is why we are also saying that we need to solve the debt issue in this country because we are having state-owned entities crumbling and they are not producing the work they need to produce to support communities. Instead, they are paying bills. So, yeah, the, the state-owned entities is a, a very, very serious challenge. And unfortunately, its malfunction continues to kill and destroy the dignity of South Africans. Well, uh, there are over 500 registered political parties in South Africa, you know, in the political realm as a whole. And with Rise and Zanzi being one of them, how ready are they for the 2024 general elections? She did uh, touch on a few, you know, key nuggets that uh, they will be a part of the manifesto as they, it will be announced in the next few weeks. But for now, I want us to take a quick breather. We're coming back with more after this.
Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We are almost at the end of the show and we are still joined in studio by Esther Padi, the national coordinator of Razum Zanti, talking to us about how the party is gearing up for next year's elections and also reflecting on the party's convention conference that was held at Constitutional Hill this past uh, weekend. Esther, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, 500 parties, uh, you know, registered on uh, the database in the country. Um, how ready are you, um, you know, as, as, as Razum Zanti for 2024 elections? I mean, people now will have to, you know, go around the ballot and then look for they are, I mean, yeah. their favorite parties there. Um, how ready is uh, Razum Zanti mm -hmm. for next year? No, 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 I, 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 can, I can say I'm very confident. The groundwork has been amazing. And the reception of our people in our communities has been very amazing because we are coming in a different way. I don't believe us go, I don't remember us going to communities and saying vote for Rizem Zanzi. But we, the way we are approaching communities and how we're also empowering civil organizations to be able to continue to do the work and having that partnership that will lead us to 2024 becoming a success. So I can probably say that the groundwork has been going very well. Civil organization is receiving, receiving us very well. And after this convention, we then go back to the ground and continue the work that has been started and building up the partnerships with all the civic organizations that have been calling for us to come listen to them and partner with them. So we are good to go. We are confident, regardless of the a big number of political parties that are out there, I believe uh, the risers know where they belong and they will locate us in that ballot paper. So we are completely confident. Mm. I want us to talk about the coalition government. I mean, we're seeing it happening. It seems like it's the new normal. I know we've had uh, um, uh, government of national unity just after 1994 mm. uh, and stuff. But um, let's talk about uh, how things have been shifting now. Uh, are there engagements from Razum Zanzi's perspective? Uh, are you willing to get into coalition with any other party? Maybe let's say, for instance, the ANC, let's say the EFF. Uh, are you willing to work with those people? And also, I want to understand, I mean, there's also the issue of the multi-party charter also, the charter that is happening uh, between um, various parties, the DAs, the Action SA also. Um, what do you make of... Um, just the dynamics of politics, how they are changing now. Yeah. So let me just start here. Uh, when we decided finally as Rise and Sons that we are going to register as a political party, we did that decision, we had that made the decision because uh, people did not like what they had already in whatever that was existing in the political parties that were there. So uh, we have been approached by the people, the parties that want to go to the moon and all of those that want to do various things. But we have been saying we have signed a pact with our members, yeah. uh, sorry, our supporters, because they, we, it was clear for them when they joined Rise and Zanzi and committed themselves to Rise and Zanzi, that was what they wanted for them, for, for, for them to for, for them to vote for in the ballot paper. So we are still going to have a conversation with our supporters, who are the people we are representing on what the mandate should be. Uh, we do not want to just jump and make decisions and deals Gabatu, Gamapilo, Abatu, and we have not involved them. So, Rizem Zanzi, what we are trying to do different, honestly, is to always make sure that people, those, the voices of the people are heard. And there is no partnership or collusion that we would say we are interested in, more especially because we are where we are, because we are all not happy with the existing political parties. After the conversation, maybe af after the elections, will then consult and get a clear mandate from our supporters or where do they want us to go. So you're saying you won't be able to, you won't be working with uh, the major parties no, that no. we know? Our coalition is with the people and the civic society, uh, civic organizations. Just lastly, before I let you go, yeah. what is next for Rizem Zanzi? 
So what's next is that we are going to go back and finalize our people's manifesto, launch it, and go continue to go on the ground. Uh, we have built forces, and I'm sure you are aware that we are have presence in all nine provinces. So the work now is just to go back there, make sure that we get ready for the and what is this um, the voter registration weekend, and after that prepare ourselves for the campaign, then the election campaign. So. Our, we're rolling our sleeves now. We are going to be going on the ground to play with other kids there. Mm. Just, uh, you know, I, I was supposed to actually let you go, but uh, the current situation that is happening in between Israel and Palestine, obviously, as Razum Zanti, you've got a comment about the ongoing war there. I mean, yeah. casualties there are people, ordinary people in both countries. You know, mm. uh, we're seeing numbers now rising, over 700 people dying in, uh, in, in, in Gaza there, uh, 400 Palestinians also dying. Uh, what do you make of uh, the conflict itself? I mean, it died down a bit a few years ago, yeah. but now uh, we're seeing it happening again. Yeah, so we're going to take out a formal statement tomorrow, I believe. Uh, but what I can just share the sentiments of the team is that we do not condone the violence. As a country that has experienced a violent past, this is very a bit traumatic for some of us. And we feel that the lives of the people are always used as pawns to fight battles that we, the people don't even understand where they are coming from. So a detailed statement will be set, will be taken out tomorrow where we share our views and opinions. But basically what we are saying that the violence is not cool and the lives of the people and the dignity must always be preserved and not used as a political weapon for whoever. Esther Paddy, thanks very much. I hope to have you soon Let's before do. the elections. We've got so much to talk about. Much Definitely. appreciated. Thank you so much, Tavo, for having me. That was uh, Esther Paddy, who is the Razam Zanti National Coordinator, giving us a background of what Razam Zanti is and what it stands for as a new political party. We also looked at the People's Convention Conference, which uh, the party hosted uh, this past weekend, which outlined uh, the party's policy proposal ahead of the general elections in 2024. Just talking to us, saying that uh, they will uh, make sure that uh, you know the manifesto is released uh, to us uh, as South Africans to know exactly uh, what to expect uh, as uh, people will be heading to the polls in 2024. Uh, that's how we wrap it up for today's edition of So It's Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at soetotoday at soetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 81 from myself and the rest of the team, good night. Uh, Mas Chaba Kobola is up next with your latest primetime news. Until then, have a very good evening. <laughs>